Let's start things off. Just for a quick sound check, can you give me your okay. name, age, and occupation? Yeah, my name is Hunter McKnight. I am 27 years old, and I am a high school science teacher. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we talking like physics, chemistry, general chemistry, science? Chemistry, human AMP, uh, and I teach some digital media as well, but that's not really science. Mm -hmm. so. Is this something you've always wanted to do? Well, I actually wasn't even introduced in, like, to Survivor until I was a senior in college. Uh -huh. Yeah, I grew up... Uh, Growing up, I saw the show. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, that seems really interesting, but it was reality TV. And my family was like, no, we're not going to do reality TV. Mm -hmm. this, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians and stuff like that did not set a good precedent. You know, for they're really in the same family, <laughs> yeah, I would say. Exactly, exactly. But whenever I saw it in college, I like my roommate was really into it, and so he played it for me. I instantly fell in love, and so he went back because he was watching the live show mm -hmm. and so we went back and we watched all of season 28 and yeah. you know obviously that's a great one to get you really hooked in it and so then I fell in love with it and I uh, I was going to be a doctor this is a lot of stuff for you no please going, no, I want to um, find about this specifically because yeah. I know I'd read about this right mm -hmm. that like you were on the path to become a doctor yeah. and then you said yeah. like no let me take my talents into yeah. the classroom yeah, yeah the more lucrative job of the day lucrative perhaps <laughs> emotionally <laughs> yeah yeah uh, no I so I was I graduated a semester early from college, uh, and that was my like fall semester of my senior year when I got introduced to it. When I graduated, I got to come to my hometown, uh, and my sister was going on maternity leave, so I got to sub for her in the classroom. Mm -hmm. That So I had the opportunity to really do that. Um, and I was like, hey, I love Survivor. I've, I've been a program director at a camp, and I said, I, would, I want to... Like, I want to do this with the kids, you know, before I go to medical school and in, yeah. in the fall. And so I said, I'm going to do this here. Ended up really love, like, loving getting to serve the kids uh, and, and getting to do this survival with the kids. And I was like, okay, it's, it's obvious, like, this, this is something that's just a lot of fun. Like, mm -hmm. I, I love being able to see kids in their highs and their lows. It, when, you see, when you're a doctor, you only see them when they're sick. And they don't want to see you very long. And they only want to see you if they're sick. And so I was like, this, it just seemed like it fit more. I felt like the Lord was leading me that way. And so... I had a full ride. I had direct admissions. I had all those things like lined out, but mm -hmm. uh, ended up going a different way. I've got a hair like stuck to my forehead. How do your students feel about Mr. McKnight coming out to play Survivor? They don't know. They're gonna freak out, right? Wait, you didn't tell no, them. No, I can't tell them. <laughs> you know, that's like like it's a small town. They would definitely uh, it would spread pretty fast, but that's pretty hush hush. I can't tell them. They're gonna lose their minds. I mean, I, I can that. only imagine. Yeah, yeah. I want to tell them so bad because they would. I would like to see the preemptive. Uh, yeah. But but no, they don't know yet. So in terms of yeah, you you mentioned coming in with Kagayan, uh -huh. but did you sort of watch a bunch of? Seasons oh yeah, after? I did. So after I watched, like we binged watch it. Survivor was almost the reason I didn't have a 4.0 in college was because, like, we were taking gross anatomy during yeah. that time, which is like you cut up to dead bodies or whatever. So a very intensive class. But it was like, we're in the lab cutting up bodies. Then we're coming to watch the Survivor. Then we're, and so I, I've watched through all that I can get my hands on. And wow. so, I've, yeah. And then whenever I had graduated and had all that free time that semester, I watched while I was making stuff to do with the kids. And so. Yeah. So then give me one winner and one non-winner that you feel like you identify with. The most oh okay it's i i really i'll give you two i'm gonna i'm yeah, gonna please. mix a couple you can cheat it's i'm okay. gonna i'm gonna mix i'm gonna mix jt and tyson you know because jay tyson we love it yeah. <laughs> we, we love it i know i can never like say that i'm gonna be like tyson but i really appreciate how he plays mm -hmm. you know i appreciate he's able to make great relationships but still play the game right. and still have fun while doing it, you know. And, you know, he, he takes everything so lightheartedly, and that's pretty fun. And so I like that about him. JT, he just got the Southern in him. And so I've got to, I've got to relate to that. And so put those two together, and that's what I'm trying to be. Yeah, so I'm curious when you're out here. Are you, like, are you playing up the accent? Because to your point, like, there is this, I feel like, affiliation and assumption of, like, yeah. this genteel, kind aspect. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't think I have a... a really big accent and mm -hmm. maybe you're like yeah you do i mean i'm, I'm a you know northeaster so i think any, any lilt <laughs> any, <laughs> pings on my radar but to your yeah, point yeah. yeah i like i use y'all and i say stuff like that it's not as it's not as sweet as jt's was yeah but yeah no i i plan to play that up i don't i don't plan to advertise that you know i was going to medical school or that i've done this with the kids i love being outside i love camping i'm let that really show because mm -hmm. uh, i think that's uh, some southern attributes that i think are worth what, what's your favorite moment in Survivor history? Does it go back to that season that was the gateway oh. to it all? Oh, one of my favorite moments uh, was was and Tyson again, co like coaching coach, you know, <laughs> not not to wear his feathers yes. to tribal. It's just such a funny moment. It is like 
Like, I, sometimes I just go back and watch that one because it's so classic. It's just hilarious to watch. Yeah. And you see, like, Tyson genuinely cares for coaching this, but he's hilarious in the yeah. way that he's sharing it. What would you say is one life experience that has prepared you most for this? Was yeah. it your career shift or was it something else? Well, no, I, um, it's so hard to say, you know, because how does, how does somebody get prepared for this? It, yeah. It's so different and it's always changing. But where I teach is a little bit different than a regular high school. It's a boarding school. And, like, kids come from all over the country. It's for kids. Uh, it's a small Christian boarding school for kids from broken backgrounds. So maybe, oh, wow. maybe their parents are incarcerated or have problems with drugs. Or maybe the kids have had trouble with stuff like that. And so they come into my classroom. I've had kids from China, from India, like in my classroom before. So it's really like a weird melting pot in the middle of Mississippi, right? It's yeah. weird. And so I get to, and, and these kids already have like kind of like trust issues like the adults in their lives hasn't really haven't really like been great role models for them so why should they trust me now when i'm trying to say hey i know like chemistry isn't going to change your life but like it's important to do your best in everything yeah. that you're doing and so that's what i go into and so i don't know if you'll find a more uh similar environment to what you'd find on survivor but i know in my classroom i have people who are hungry sleep deprived <laughs> tired don't know each other and generally just don't trust one another and that's who, who i get to t and i get to convince them hey let's talk about atoms and yeah. <laughs> what they do and so sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't but i learned very very early on <clears throat> like if you want to be successful with teaching and with just influencing kids lives you have to listen to them first and so you have to get to know people and that's i know i want to implement that i want yeah. to like so many people want to talk about themselves uh, but i want to hear hear from them now are you playing with like the ghost of Ron Clark in the back of your head of like, <laughs> you know, teachers might have that vivality to it, that energy. Is that something uh -huh. you're going to bring to the to the show? Yeah. What the guy that won from the unspeakable season? Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, he, he didn't mention. But yeah, I I think I think there are a lot of attributes. Like people are like, I'm a doctor, so I'm going to be good at this game. No, because patients want to live, they're going to listen to you. Like lawyers, <laughs> lawyers are like. I've got this in a bag and it's like, well, yeah, of course your clients listen to what you say because you hold a lot in your hand. Teachers, the kids don't care. Have you been in a classroom recently? They are not worried about no. it. And so to have the ability to sway a classroom, I think uh, holds a lot of weight in, in a game like this. Uh, not that I do it perfectly, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you flop, but that's when you learn, right? Yeah, in terms of preparation, it says here you built challenges. Yeah, is this a yeah. hobby or was this actively for this was? On here? Yeah, this. Well, no, no, no. So this is I do a survivor with the kids. Right. Like I put on, and so I've like during uh, COVID, you get the stimulus check money. I use it to buy and see and buy a CNC machine, which is like it cuts out puzzles and routers. So I was able to build stuff very similar. Wow, you did it before Carson ever could. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I didn't think to use a uh, 3D printer, but a 3D printer would print them so small. Mine are like mine are pretty close to okay. the right size. Yeah. And so like w during COVID, I just had a lot of time, and I love being outside. And so I like clear cut a whole field and built like challenges and stuff. Yeah, I've built a tribal council treehouse with like rope bridges and stuff. I mean, listen, if you don't win this, like there might be a spot open in the art department. <laughs> are able to impress well, enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, it, I would, I would go off on a tangent on that, but yeah, I, I, it's different in Carson. I think Carson's was for the in intention of training. Yeah. Mine was more for like doing it for the kids. I practiced on them. You know, the final five chat or puzzle that they just did in the last the one. The circle. I had just built that with the kids. Wow. Uh, for the kids to do in our last one that we did. And so, yeah, I, I've built a few of them, but I, I know like you can only practice so much. Like if it's a puzzle, that helps. But in, yeah. in terms of like the other 70% of it, I don't know that I could really. What about the dexterity stuff? Cause I know like Matthew, for instance, from this last season, right? Like built that snake little maze. Is that what you built as yeah. well for the kids? I've built some of those. It's not necessarily a snake one. I had the one with like the holes in yeah, it. Like you had to work through. Yeah, yeah, I, I've done that one. Uh, I mean, you know, whenever I do the survivor with the kids, I realize that there's just different components that they mash together. There's a yeah. balance part. There's a pushing something heavy part. There's a carrying different stuff. And so I've mixed all those in. And of course, whenever I'm building it, I was like, oh, let's just see how hard it is for me to run across there. I'm pretty good at balance. I don't, I don't know. I get car sick really easy. So maybe my inner ears like <laughs> messed up for like <laughs> too large or something. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so I, I, I practice that. I, I practice those different things just I'm, for fun. I mean, do you realize that essentially you produced the teenage version of Survivor that <laughs> Jeff has always been wanting to do? Yeah, I, I know. Wait, whenever he was announcing having the teenage uh, version of Survivor, I was like, I don't know, man. They're kind of emotional. Like, they're, <laughs> they're kind of a mess. This is all I have to work with, but it's kind of a mess. But yeah, we'll take them out for like a week. And I I really want them to compete in this during the summer. So I have to incentivize them. So I was like, look, I'll give like $1,000 to whoever wins. And wow. so, yeah, yeah. That's, I, that's a hefty chunk of change. I 
thought it was yeah. just going to be like an A on your midterm. Yeah, no, I make twenty seven thousand a year, so it's not like it's <laughs> it's not like it's a lot. Uh, sorry, I don't, it's not like I make a lot, but yeah, no, I because I, I wanted to play really well. Like we were coming back from COVID. Yeah. There's a lot of hype, and I was like, I'm giving them thousand dollars. When the people in charge of the school found out that I was giving that much, they're like, Whoa wait a minute <laughs> so now the question is like are you picking anything up from watching these kids play well i think so i think so and and uh what's funny is we do our instagram live like so when we do our tribals because the parents want to watch we the best we have is instagram live yeah the thing about instagram live is people can comment on it and so all the moms are like just <laughs> typing away yeah there's a game within the game of all yeah, the moms, so the like moms just you, yelling at each other your son voted off my daughter wait, wait, <laughs> exactly like i'll see you later stacy or whoever <laughs> uh Stacey's actually one of, the, one of the mom's names, so <laughs> that will change it to something else. Uh, but it, I, I love to play, like not play for the kids, but really like ask leading questions to get them to think, and that makes the mom so mad. They're like, yeah. don't try to ruin their game. Because I, the, la- the most recent one, to give you an example, I had set it up, you know, the way I do it, to give you an idea, uh, it doesn't end in a vote because it's high school. Right. They're just going to vote for their friends. It's a popularity contest. And so what, they, what they're going to do is as they get voted out, they can award advantages in the final challenge to somebody. Oh. And so, yeah. And so it's a way of like, you have to be nice to people as you put them out, but also it, it gives people who have like played well an advantage. Uh, but I, I knew that the guys would get voted out early because since it's challenge based, like let's get rid of all of the challenge people because that's what's going to be the most threatening. And so I had it incorporated where they have these dual tokens. And if you get voted out, you can play your dual token. You only get one and you have to battle against the person who got the second highest number of votes just to help the people who would be more challenged Jeff, don't people. listen to this part, please. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't. <laughs> no, no more of that kind of stuff. But the kids didn't. The kids were not. Like they were just listening to these senior boys and it mm-hmm. drove me crazy because I want to see all the kids successful. And I'm like I built this into it so that to help them, now y'all need to do what y'all need to do. And both it was like five to three boys to girls. And the girls just kept going out one by one. I was like, all right, let's talk about this. Like, what is your plan here? Uh, but the parents did not like it. The parents of the uh, the boys did not like it. But in- well, let's translate, you know, from, from that version to this uh-huh. version. How do you think you're going to be perceived out here? By the players? Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think I'll come across. I want. I know how I want to be perceived. Uh, apparently, I'm. I'm one of the bigger guys out here, which I didn't expect to be. I didn't. Ex- I didn't expect to be because in my normal life, I'm. I'm surrounded by. You know, I, I coach, and so I'm surrounded by lots of other pretty big guys, and so right. I didn't think that I would be perceived as that. But all of a sudden now, that seems like how how I'll come across. But I'm fine with that. I just really want to sell that I'm here to have a good time. Uh, you know, I, I'll be fine being labeled as just like kind of like a meathead kind Mm -hmm. of you know doesn't understand the strategy a whole lot it's just go with the flow has a good time wants to climb the coconut trees uh, and build cool shelters like that's what I want to be perceived as. Yeah. So then, is there going to be a point where like the afterburners turn on? Yeah. Sort of yeah. like, sort of like when Carolyn played the idol, where you're like, haha, all along, <laughs> yeah. I've been the nerd in disguise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and even if that is a, a final tribal council reveal of, of you know what I do and and how my life has shifted and everything and what I am and and really up until that point, like you know, cause you don't want to flame out too early. Right. There's a balance there. Uh, I am like I. I have to do some finagling before, like early in the game. I don't want to be one who's pushing pretty hard, but I know that at least the pattern is people who aren't seen as challenge threats go off pretty early, but then right when the merge hits, it's like boom, boom, boom. Like like it's open season on me, right? (laughs) And so that's where I've got to somehow work that to where even if it is open season on people that are perceived like me, there's more of us, mm-hmm. right? I've got to make sure that there's, you know, a, a larger group of us. And then from there, uh, really try to, to take control. Yeah. So know? on that note, what qualities are you looking for in an alliance? Are you looking for like a day one, number one, ride or die? Well, there's a guy with a Mississippi tattoo on his arm. You know, there's only, there's never been a guy from Mississippi play and it looks like there's going to be two <laughs> this. And so I'm like, we've got to work together. Right. He had, right. A, he had a Ole Miss backpack on. I was like, okay, he could play for Ole Miss, but then he had the tattoo on his arm. I was like, okay, but there's no way. Cause he's, if I was to pick, I guess the other big guy, he's the other big guy. Like there's no way we're on the same tribe. Right. And so I'm just like, I got to hope he survives <laughs> so I can work with him. But yeah, I, I would love to have that. And I think, um, if I can sell the, I just need somebody to help me with the strategy and let me help you with the, the mm-hmm. challenges that we can maybe work together and, and I can, can like get that perception out there. Now, are you 
not afraid to let Mississippi blood run through these streets. You know, if we're looking at like a Jetty, Jesse and Cody, we saw this yeah. bit with Carolyn and Jam Jam. Like, if it comes down to it, are you willing to cut a number one down the line? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, but I, I, you know, I want to be the JT and the JT and, and Steven. You know, yeah. I want to bring the Mississippi to the end. Okay. And, and just have a better shot at him. Not that, like, if, hey, if... I think his QB or is his initials. Mm-hmm. If he if he's getting a lot of love, it's like it's time to go. Like I'm right. sorry, but like you got to go. And I, what's nice is you know if that's the perception, then lots of people will be on board for that. And so it's an easy out then. Yeah. But if if I'm the one in the lead, then I really got to hold tight to the Mississippi boys so that we can stick together. But that's a very you know he may he may not even have that desire at all to to stick yeah. together. And, and so what you know, other people are you eyeballing right now as like just through these few days of Ponderosa as like, I've got a good vibe about you. Yeah, uh, there's a girl who kind of looks like a younger version of Natalie. Uh, she gets, and it's so weird, like how do you get good vibes, but you do. She seems to la- like find things that are funny similar to what I do. Uh, the girl with red hair and tattoos, she seems pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like the vibe she's given off. There was one girl that I wasn't quite sure about, and I feel bad talking about her, but it was only because she had sweatpants on that were in sync and I don't I, I'm not sure of all the in sync stuff but it said like no no man no cares mm. and so I'm like I'm a man <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I like that does that the, mean no cares the, right does that mean uh, you don't want the men on the tr- like so I was like oh, I don't know about you so keep an eye on her but then I realized she's the only left handed per- other left handed person that I've seen so I'm like maybe you know maybe I can overlook the the differences and oh, make that's it interesting. Yeah, I mean, you can make bonds over the small things. It, it, anything, yeah. I, you know, we get onto a beach. I'm like, I gotta find something to connect with you on, so that we're, hey, we're this or we're that, and so yeah. There's a there's a guy who uh, his bag was like a Team USA bag, mm. which is a weird flex. Like you couldn't have packed in something else. Like wow, well, yeah. <laughs> what? So we just have to know that you're like really good at something right. we don't know what something that you were represented a country in some aspects <laughs> yeah I, I, like on a global level yeah, like exactly. you are obviously good at something we just mm-hmm. have to guess at what it is and so but you know that's the kind of like so it's weird like that's threatening but that's the kind of people I need there because when the the open season starts you know there's like mm-hmm. there's college athlete here there's yeah. team USA whoever over here you know let's not look at Hunter <laughs> well let me throw a scenario out to you that okay. might play into that so let's okay. say like first few days you're at camp mm-hmm. boat pulls up you know what's happening someone oh, steps yeah. off and says pick one person to go on a journey mm-hmm. is this something you want to do is this something you're trying to get someone else to go on what's your mm-hmm. strategy i i don't think i go on that mm-hmm. because i think and i'm not like i'm not trying to hype myself up like oh look at me i'm like a great survivor player but i think people i don't know phys, like people that are that can just be dubbed challenge threats so quickly uh should not be overdoing it and, and mm-hmm. like the, the pursuing a lot of things. I want to know if we do the random draw, that's great and that'd be awesome if I can go. But I know for my game, I think it I think it may be kind of detrimental. But that's mm. just a perception, you know. It's a, that's subject to change whenever we get out there. Well, even outside of that type <laughs> of stuff, how keen are you on advantages? Is it more of a blessing or a curse for you? You feel? I I would love to find some, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna. I'm not going to jeopardize my game to, to seek it out. Mm-hmm. The real game, like the real pieces in the game aren't the advantages, it's the people. Yeah. And so if I can, you know, keep in good graces with them, then we'll be good to go, I hope. Yeah, so how tough is that to juggle, though, in the new era? Right, where you right. do feel Everything. like there's a chance that someone's going to have something <laughs> that might be real and might be fake. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. It's like you can't even get excited anymore. It's like <laughs> I found an idol, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. And so with so many tricks and turns like that, I it's weird. I think we're actually getting back to you just have to trust the relationship. And that's what it's got to be. Um, I mean, the people with the fake idols, nobody even used it last time. Right. They just ended up going out. And the, the ones with the, the real idols, only a couple of them actually were played correctly. So what does an idol do other than get a target on your back? And uh, I mean, did anybody use it on themselves to save themselves? Brandon did. Brandon did. At the did. very beginning. But yeah, the, uh, the other Heidi used hers as well. Right. But it, she didn't use it successfully. Right. And Carolyn used it for Carson and it, it wasn't really used successfully. And yeah. so like, what, what advantage are these bringing? Yeah. You know? So let's talk about decisions for a second. Uh-huh. In your real life, do you have a specific process that you use to make a decision, a flow chart, or are you more so go by the gut type of guy? Uh, well... Oh, that's a that's an interesting one. I don't I don't really know. I usually spend some time thinking thinking about it. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a big decision that I've made recently and how I how I went with it. You know, if it's usually go with the go with the flow of it. Like if yeah. it 
if that is how it's feeling like it needs to go, then that, that's what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And so you can work things out and, and finagle things to make it go your way. But to, in terms of just making decisions, I think I will take a step back and kind of like check it out, but then dive right into it. Is there a decision that was made on the show that had you like standing up out of your couch being like, I can't believe you did that. What were you thinking? Yeah, well, not recently. I remember when I was t- flashback all the way to my first experience with uh, Survivor. Uh, I was watching the Blood versus Water that Tyson won. Now, I'm a big Tyson fan. I was not a Tyson fan then because I didn't know how the game worked. Right? Mm-hmm. I didn't. I was still unsure as to, like he just seems like he's so mean. But I realized he's hilarious. Also, that season's not the funniest Tyson seasons. It's no. the previous one. He had the cupcake belt, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was it. But I remember getting so annoyed at uh, them for not trying harder on Monica. Whenever mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I think it was Tyson and Jervis sit out and Monica chooses to like compete in the whole yeah. like this challenge. I was like, why are I just pointing out the like obvious fact that there's a difference in you and them? It was probably misplaced. Again, it was early, but I remember taking my hat and throwing it on the ground and just being like, what are you doing? <laughs> and the guy, my friend was like, bro, you need to calm down. Like, it's not that serious, but I was like, I hit, oh, and another one, uh, I can't remember. One of the girls that frustrated me, is it, what was her name? When Dom and Wendell went to the end, Laurel, she drove me crazy. Mm-hmm. It was like, do something. Mm-hmm. Like you're not gonna win this. Like do like it. It like infuriated me. Props to to Wendell and Dom for like playing the way they did. But like that drove me crazy. Like I like play to win. Like that's what yeah. I want to see. And you were not playing to win. <laughs> what do you think is your hottest Survivor take? What do you think is your most controversial opinion about a pl- a person, a season, the show in general? Uh. I I believe that Natalie deserved to be Russell, and I know there's a lot of controversy there. But she she played the game to win, you yeah. know. And that's I guess I don't know how hot of a take that is. But when I went back and recently rewatched it, uh, you know, I when I first watched, it, I was like, oh, Russell did a lot. But looking back at how Natalie handled relationships and really played the game, that first vote against Eric was like so all her. Like yeah. it, that was the vote that had to happen to open up the rest of it. And, and then she look did at him. It. He turns around at the final travel council and like and talks for her, like yeah. like hypes her up. And so, like I I the after rewatching it, I was like, oh yeah, Natalie, Natalie's legit. Mm-hmm. Final question: If you could bring a celebrity or a fictional character out as a loved one for a loved one's oh, visit, who goodness. are you picking? <laughs> I actually joked about this uh, whenever they were asking us our favorite celebrities. I, I said, <laughs> I said Selena Gomez or Jennifer Lawrence. I said my favorite actress and actresses uh, are Selena Gomez and Jennifer Lawrence. And I was like, if you could bring them out on the uh, family visit, that'd be great. But I don't know if that's actually my answer. Uh, I, I didn't think about the, the family visit, though. I don't know. Maybe yeah, I mean, like, you're at a low moment. You could use someone to cheer you up in more okay. ways than one, or if you're looking for advice. Like, uh, you know, there's no wrong answer here, there's really. There's no wrong answer. Fictional or not. I don't... That's one that... See, I, I like to really think about these kind of ones. Mm-hmm. Take all the time so, you need. So maybe I'm not like a fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy <laughs> as I thought. You know? This is the one thing to hold you <laughs> this up. Is, yeah. This is the one... Like, this is the most important question that's been asked in the past however long. <laughs> you're going to sit up it, for the next 26 days and then we're going to talk in like May and you're like, I finally I got, have the answer. When I was in that lowest moment, I thought I needed yeah. blank. Ah, who is someone that I would really like? I mean, other than like actual family right. members because that's boring. Uh, I don't know. Who's a fun person? I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It, it could be Selena Gomez or Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, I mean, we could be. say that. You know, Tyson would be fun. It'd be fun to meet him. Oh, yeah. I mean, he definitely counts as a celebrity. <laughs> okay, then we'll say that one. We'll oh, 100%. With that. I mean, I think when you begin with Tyson, you end with Tyson. I think it makes sense. <laughs> you got to. Plus, you know, it maybe get some advice in there. It, it would not be John Cochran. I can tell you that. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I, that whole, like, go out and visit with John Cochran was kind of a weird thing to me. Oh, definitely. It was, like, off the wall. Did you hear about the... I, of course you heard about it, because the what season 41 was gonna be yes of course rick devins with the mustache in the jungle i was like oh that is wild but your thoughts on that were all right come on out rick no. <laughs> yeah. i was about to say he pops out right now I mean, oh no i'm so sorry i thought it was a great idea yeah exactly no it's, it was it was interesting i mean look now i'm glad that it's had it's been more spread out and that like this has 
allowed us in many reasons through diversity and from a creative perspective uh -huh. to like re-engage with it. But yeah, it's a, it's a fever dream of a concert. I think even <laughs> Jeff would say that. It really, it really was. I was like, man, okay, that's interesting. But how are you feeling right now? What's what's sort of the emotional state that you're describing? You know, hopefully days before you end up hitting the beach and doing the whole thing. Yeah, what's weird. I was thinking about this in our boat ride over here, and I was like, I just I do not want to get voted out first. I do not want to get voted like I do not want to get voted out early. I want to make it. I want to make it pretty far. But it had this weird like introspect like you're asking for more like difficulty. And the longer you stay, the harder it's going to get. And right. I was like, okay, well let's do it. Part of me is just so right. Like this is all fun, but this is like this is not me. Like being confined and the cameras. I want to get on that beach and I want to build a shelter. Like I want to climb a coconut tree. I want to swim. Like, like I want to meet the people. Right. Like that's one of the hardest things that I'm realizing is like we're like when people share experiences, it's like bonding, right? Yeah. It's, and we've shared a lot of experiences, but the bonding hasn't happened because you haven't talked about it. No. Right. They got to sleep in these tents. Yeah. That have sat on the top of a hill in the sun for like eight hours. And so you get it. It's like an oven. And yeah. you're like, oh my goodness, can we get some air in here? It's like, it'd be better to sleep out there, which is just funny. It's just yeah. a funny thing. And then laugh about, you know, the, the plane ride over here or the boat ride. And so I want, I want to start, uh, you know, sharing, sharing experiences with these people. And so I'm just ready to get started. I'm, I'm excited. Well, we're excited to, to see you go, man. This was such a delight to get well, to talk you. with you. I we, appreciate it. Yeah. We're all, we're all set to go. So thank you so much for, <laughs> it's so great meeting you. So great getting to talk with you. I cannot wait to see you know, you got a couple more days, we'll see, of like, you know, camping down in that oven before you end up getting <laughs> taken out and the dish ends up getting served out. So Wait, so do you know what day we start? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no, I, I was about to say. I can get ready yeah, to away right now. I was, you said a couple more days, I was open tomorrow. <laughs> no, we'll see. We'll see. Either, no matter what, though, I'm so excited to see you out there, man. Well, it's thank you. so great meeting you. You, are, you. you are good to go, sir. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Of course, man. You have a great day. Bye,